I'm Jesse Oberlo with Hausman Johnson Insurance. I think we're going to go ahead and get started today. Um, we're going to take the next 45 minutes and just talk a little bit about uh, vendor summits and uh, how they can create a better partnership with you and your benefits vendors. Um, really the focus of today is to talk about how we can get vendors from being vendors or, or commodities into partnerships and get them to work on behalf of you. So, um, and again, as Suzanne said, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them into the chat and uh, I will answer them um, at the end of the presentation. So today we're going to talk a little bit, like I said, about vendor summits. We're going to go over a, a few things. First, we're going to talk about uh, what to do to get started, um, really the who, what, when, and why of, of vendor summits. We're going to talk about creating a shared vision and setting goals amongst your vendors. Sometimes talking about data mapping and how um, data can be integrated amongst your vendors. Uh, discuss scenario, employee scenario planning and how that can factor into the goal setting. And then finally, performance guarantees and, and setting your vendors accountable at the end of this. So um, we'll, what we're going to do is walk you through a couple of case studies and talk about uh, how you can use Vendor Summit to accomplish all of these things. First of all, I just wanted to spend a, a little bit of time talking about the sustainable change cycle. As you can see in the, the slide in front of you, um, see this, this comes out of value-based benefit design but can be applied across all different walks of industry. Um, and it's really going to be the foundation of how um, you go about center summits and, and how to organize it and how to continue to reevaluate it on annual or, or uh, however often you choose to do so basis. But really it starts with data collection and finding out what data you have available to you as an employer from all of your different vendors. Data integration, what, uh, how do you integrate that data? Um, how are the vendors talking to one another? And how can that data be used to classify risk um, within your specific population? And, and goals you want to set and what interventions do you want to set for those specific risk factors? And finally, how are you going to measure or evaluate the outcomes of those goals that you set? And then once you've gotten to that point, um, the, 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 the goal starts all over again and you go back to data collection and again deciding um, what risk factors you have and uh, what goals need to be uh, updated or changed and uh, continue that process. And the, the vendor summit and getting all the vendors on the same page to understand those goals and those interventions is the key and uh, getting them again to be partners with you um, throughout this process. So get started. Uh, when we started think about uh, getting started with a vendor summit, we want to think about who are we going to invite, um, when we have it, what are we going to talk about, and why are we doing this? And, and when you think about it, um, when you look at your your benefit package, traditionally employers have organized their health really benefit programs in independent silos. Multiple vendors, those vendors usually have their own ID cards, um, their own ways to identify employees. Um, many of them have similar value added uh, programs that they offer to employees, but they all offer them on their own kind of accord. And very uh, frequently do they ever talk to one another. Um, as a result, is a patchwork of overlapping vendors that are targeting many of the same uh, people within your population with the same chronic condi con conditions. Um, so what that often leads to is multiple mixed messages and sometimes it can be overbearing for these individuals that are within your population as a result as of managing their chronic conditions. Um, and then also on the flip side for those that are kind of the, the, the walking well, um, oftentimes they get forgot about uh, and are left um, feeling like there is not a lot of value being added to them as a result uh, as, as part of their benefit package. Vendor Summit does is it really attempts to bring all of these vendors together to work collectively to maximize the value of the total benefit package that you're being offered. Um, think about it, when you meet one-on-one -on -one with vendors, uh, many times those meetings are focused on that vendor, the product, their new products, um, something that they're often trying to sell you, um, something to upsell you from whatever you're currently offering, very independent, and they don't get 
you understand or know what you're doing uh, as it relates to the other benefits that you offer. Doing a vendor summit by getting everyone on the, in the room together, it takes the focus off of them uh, as a commodity, as something where they're trying to sell you, and really puts the focus on you as the employer to talk about how can they work collectively to help you meet your goals. And that's really what, again, the target of this vendor summit is, is, is to change that relationship with your vendor and make them a partner with you in helping you meet your goals. So about the who, what, when, and why, really the who is going to be, who do you uh, work with it from a vendor standpoint? Um, who are the different players in your benefit package? And, and who do you want at the table for these, for these meetings? So you start with your third-party administrator if you're self-funded or your health insurer if you're fully insured. Uh, you have a pharmacy benefit manager oftentimes when you're self-funded. Oftentimes, the health insurer manages the pharmacy piece of that as well. Um, but a lot of times, even in the, the uh, fully insured market, they're so independent. Uh, they have independent resources that manage pharmacy. So um, it's a good idea to, to get in, um, making or at least asking those uh, health insurance companies if they can representation from the pharmacy side or at least be able to when we start talking about the homework and, and what they need to do from a vendor standpoint, making sure that the health insurer also understands that they're in charge of the pharmacy piece as well. Are there employee assistance programs, um, wellness, which are all tied to your HRA vendors if you're doing a health risk assessment. If you're in case management, which is, again can sometimes be tied to your health insurer or your third party administrator, and then other times it can be independent. Um, so whether you, you're using it through your health insurer or through an independent um, just make sure that you also have representation there and that, that the people, if it is, again, through that health insurer, they can speak on behalf of what's going on in the disease and case management avenues. Uh, oftentimes, it's a good, time, a good thing to think about your worker's compensation carrier. Uh, oftentimes, what's happening on the health side and what's happening on the worker's comp side have direct correlations. And if you start thinking about initiatives and goals for your company, um, you want to make sure you're tying your safety programs to your wellness programs. You want to make sure that the thing that you're doing from a worker's comp and a risk uh, standpoint on the worker's comp side uh, correlates with what you're doing on the health side so that, again, it's a kind of a consistent message across the board. Um, and oftentimes you'll find that workers' compensation carriers have a lot of resources that go on tap that help in supporting some of the issues that you're doing on, on the health insurance side as well. And then you have disability cares. Um, you know, you want to make sure you're including your STD and then if you offer long-term disability as well. But um, it's one of the things we'll talk a little bit about later is understanding how your short-term disability claims um, are affecting the rest of the, your uh, claims from a health standpoint as well as a workers' comp standpoint. So wanting sure you get them involved. And then, um, you know, your broker or consultant is going to be instrumental in helping you through the whole planning process and being the facilitator for this meeting. And you also want to make sure you're including any resources that you have um, internally that's dedicated to benefits. So what are we doing or what are we trying to accomplish? Um, you know, we're trying to look at a holistic and integrated approach to managing health and disability, work comp and absenteeism. Really what the focus of, of this vendor summit is, is to begin to understand how each one of these vendors affects one another and how we can start coordinating efforts and programs to target uh, individual uh, buckets or risk conditions through the help of all of these different vendors that you're using. When goes, really what we would suggest is looking at doing something after your plan renewal, and when I talk plan renewal, usually it's re, uh, focused around the health plan. Um, typically, is a little bit slower time for the vendors, so they can dedicate some more time and resources to helping you out here. Plus, um, it, it's a good time to, to do a strategic plan for the rest of the, that plan or that calendar year. Um, and as, as you move forward, you know, you can really do it on an as-needed basis, kind of going back to that sustainable change cycle, um, how often you want to measure and reevaluate. You can do it on an annual basis. You can do it every two or three years. You can do it if you decide to change vendors here and there. But uh, that's all up to you and letting you kind of get, um, how much you want to embrace this and, and how, how well you feel like the first one goes.
And really at the why part, which is, you know, something that needs to be articulated to the, the vendors is really what you're looking at doing is you want to improve the health and productivity of the workforce through coordinated vendor activities. That is the key to this whole uh, summit, bring them all together, is to improve that health and productivity of your workforce. Before you have the Vendor Summit, it's a good idea to think about what is your shared vision and, and how do you want to go about setting goals. So oftentimes, um, you know, this can be a very broad goal um, or a vision statement. And it's something just to, to kind of throw out there as a blanket statement. And, and, you know, many of them that we've done here and then that we've we focused on, um, two main visions. And it's really enhancing the employee experience and reducing waste and inefficiencies in the benefits program. If those two things can really be the driving factors to what you're doing um, throughout the decision-making process of the event summit, um, it's only going to help uh, offer a better benefit experience to your employees. And then looking at setting specific goals to your population, again, analyze data and, and focus on the top two or three conditions. Um, and you want to keep in mind that when we say data, we're not just talking about the medical claim data. Um, and, and, you know, whether you're a small employer or whether you're a large employer, you have access to a, a several different data points within uh, the different vendors that you work with. And that's really what this uh, initiative is all about, is, is bringing all of those data points together and figuring out how can be integrated and how can you learn from one another that you, when you're talking about your top two or three conditions, you're not just looking at it from a medical claim standpoint, but you're looking at it from a total cost standpoint of all the different benefit programs that you offer. Um, so that would include, you know, health risk assessment data. It would include workers' comp claims. It would include disability claims in addition to your health claims. Um, and when we get into action items, um, you want to make sure that, or souls, um, you want to make sure that you identify who's accountable for the goals, what are the action items, and then how success is going to be measured for each that goal. Um, without understanding how things are going to be measured at the end, um, it's very hard to understand whether or not your goals have been achieved. So we're going to get a little case study here from an employer that we've worked through uh, a vendor summit with, and this is an actual agenda that was set up. So first off, you can see when you look at the time, you want to plan for three to four hours for these. Um, you're not looking at an hour and a half meeting. Um, it's definitely something that you're going to want to dedicate half of a day to. And really, when you go through this agenda, um, you start by the first half an hour really giving an overview of introductions uh, from each one of the vendors. To have five minutes or so to talk about how um, they currently offer services to your organization. One thing that you will remind them right out of the gate is that it, it's not a commercial um, for them, but it's more of a chance for them to give a view of their services to their vendors. You'd be real surprised when, when you start this process how few of the vendors that you work with uh, interact with one another and in some cases have even never met each other. So this is a chance for everyone to kind of introduce themselves and introduce their organization. And then spend about a half an hour as the uh, employer and potentially through the help of your uh, agent or consultant going through laying out uh, what are your health goals and strategies, a couple of those that we just talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, review some of the key trends that you've seen within the data. Um, and then set up the expectations for the meeting. So we'll get into a little bit more of that here in a second. With that, we move on to talk about the top five conditions exercise. That's the homework you're going to give the vendors prior to that um, summit occurring. And then after that, you talk about what are the different um, data that are used to influence as far as what uh, what were the ultimate two to three conditions and goals that were used. And really, uh, or I guess this is the presentation or review of the vendor services and support for each targeted condition. So this is an opportunity for each one of the vendors to talk about on the two or three conditions that were selected what are the different areas uh, or resources that they have that can help support your specific goals for each one of those conditions. That leads to creating a list of action items and, and a specific role for each vendor uh, for each one of those targeted conditions. Again, it's defined 
uh, really what the employer expectations are and how you define what measurement of success is. That's going to be the action items. That's going to be the takeaway of the meeting and we'll help you with that game plan moving forward for the next 12 to, to 24 months. Um, and we'll go through each one of these pieces individually. But that's really the piece that at the end of the day, that's your takeaway, that's your roadmap for um, not only you, but also the other vendors and, and how they are going to interact with you and your employee population for the foreseeable future. So about that sample health goal and strategy, you know, this is, uh, this is one that we took directly from um, this employer, again, going through the case study. It simply states that, you know, ABC company is going to engage their employees and families in total health by providing incentives, uh, motivate the members to maintain and improve their total well-being, tools and support to, uh, to be healthy and productive employees and members of the community, and innovation and support to the members to increase their understanding of the benefits being offered and maximize the value of these benefits. So the three key takeaways for this and kind of the theme that was uh, introduced to the vendors is that this employer is looking at putting in incentives, so, so having some skin in the game from the employees, They're looking at understanding what tools are available for the employees to help um, in supporting that, and also benefit education. That third bullet point was really uh, on benefit education and what can we do to help, help the employees and their uh, Fans understand the benefits that are being offered and maximize um, the value of each one of those benefits. You can go ahead and do this for your organization, but you'll also want to make sure you do this prior to the summit, and you'll sit, share this with all the participants prior to the, the summit as well, so they get an understanding of kind of where you're at from a goal and a health strategy standpoint. Then, um, when you're going through that background, um, as, as far as Lay out, uh, you want to lay out what the goals of the vendors are and really what the expectations of day are. And doing so, um, really what it does is it establishes that foundation for a partnership between you and the vendors, but it also um, establishes that partnership between the individual vendors as well. So, um, you know, looking at it is, is anything, you know, the value that you get from these vendors, but also help you understand what are the other vendors that you're using and how can the other vendors that you're using um, help any uh, vendor maximize or enhance the services that they're offering to your employees. So that the vendor summit is going to do is it's going to identify conditions to focus on for the upcoming year or years. Um, you're going to use this time to determine based on the data and based on the input of the other uh, vendors in the room what are the conditions that you should be focusing your energy on? And then you determine the role of each one of the attending vendors in helping improve the outcomes for those identified conditions. And finally, that's going to help you create a communication action plan for the upcoming year. So laying out right ahead of time is, is really that's going to be the foundation of, of uh, the summit moving forward, and it will lay out the parameters of the work to be accomplished for that given time period. So homework. Um, what you want to do is to make sure that the vendors are given some homework prior to showing up. You don't want them showing up with a blank piece of paper and uh, you want to give them some expectations as far as what you're looking for. So a good exercise is ask them to define what they believe the top five conditions are for your organization. So again, going through this case study, um, you know, the, the vendors would be asked to define what are the top five conditions for ABC company. Uh, in addition to that, they, we also want them to provide us with uh, information as to what information they use to determine these top five conditions. I want them to be thinking again prior to the vendor summit, what information do they think others might have um, that they might find useful? additional information or data um, would be useful for that specific organization to better serve the members um, and then identify how this data can be shared and who needs what. So again, it's when we start thinking about that, that system will change uh, cycle, it's data and integrating the data, steps one and steps two, 
you have to think about that ahead of time. How are they integrating the data? How are they sharing data? Are they sharing data at all? Um, and you're asked for, for them to determine those top five conditions. Oftentimes, it helps them identify what gaps in information and data they have and where areas uh, need to be integrated. And they can start thinking about this prior to the vendor summit itself. The other thing you'll ask them to do ahead of time is to think about uh, how they report out information to you. Um, so again, helping them uh, think around who gets the information and how often. Is it only going to you? Is it going to you as the employer and your broker? Are they sharing it right now with any other vendors? Um, if not, why not? Um, and what data would be helpful for those individual vendors to better serve uh, ABC or your employers or plan members? Well, one of the things that often gets identified right away is that there's typically the biggest barrier for them to be able to share data is that plan members are not uniformly identifiable. And what that means is that some uh, maybe the health plan uses a random ID number that's rated on the ID card, but the health risk assessment, the social security numbers, and maybe the short-term disability carrier doesn't use either, and they're still using just name or name and date of birth. Um, and oftentimes when you try to share that information, it's very difficult for the vendors to line up or to coordinate that information across vendors. Sometimes uh, employers will look at third parties to help with that or potentially looking at your um, agent consultant to help with that. But at the end of the day, if there's no way to identify an individual across different vendors, it's almost impossible to coordinate that information. So one of the gaps that we often find and one of the, the quick action items is to get vendors to agree on a uniform um, ID number or a way to identify members across the board. And oftentimes all that is is having them add it up to data, um, whether it's using the health plan ID number or potentially the social security number, having that health plan share that with all the other vendors, give them essentially a census that has that number along with that employees and uh, their dependents' names, then the health risk assessment company, the worker carrier, the disability carrier, whoever it might be, um, they add that to their system as an identifiable code so that when you're getting information and data, um, those pieces can be integrated across the different um, reports that you're getting. So the information provided by the vendors and the goals set by the employers Really what you all need to do throughout this vendor summit is to reach a consensus on what are the targeted conditions you're going to focus on for the upcoming plan year. You focus on two to three conditions. Um, you don't want to buy more than you can chew. So really looking at two, potentially three conditions, especially in your first year is, is funny. And you want to sure that um, that will then be the focal point for the rest of your discussion about the vendor summit. So a couple of examples of different conditions you can use. Um, you know, if, if diabetes is a uh, high prevalence within your population, you can make that a condition. Uh, obesity can always pretty much be a condition, um, looking across pretty much all, all size employers. Another one is preventative screenings. That's one that sometimes people uh, forget about that if you base your data, you can see that maybe people aren't, aren't taking advantage of the preventative screenings the way that they should be. Um, and you know, that that's not a specific condition or disease state. It's definitely a goal and a goal that uh, can have action items and all of the different vendors that you use can be involved in helping educate people on the importance of those preventative screenings. So now a little bit into data mapping and integration opportunity. Really what I want to talk about here is, is when you start thinking about um, these specific conditions that you pick, you don't just uh, worry about those that uh, have the full blood disease state, um, but also you want to think about everyone that's involved from the, the well all the way to those that uh, has a you know complex disease with complications. So 
So this chart here and then talking about integrated health management, really what it does is it just seeks to prevent the progression in higher and more costly stage uh, within the wellness to disease um, continuum. So you see there, you know, stage one, that's your healthy people, that's your, your wellness um, people that have very little claims, if any claims. Often they get left out. Um, they fail to be acknowledged within any system. Um, when you're looking at the health claims, when you're looking at uh, disease or case management, HAs, they typically get the high scores. Um, but all those are the people that, that you want to make sure you're providing resources to so that they don't, in two years or five years from now, um, move into the next stage, which is the employee that has a heightened likelihood of that disease. So if you're talking about heart disease, or if you're talking about diabetes, that might be individual that, uh, again, has very little claims, um, if any claims, but maybe in their health risk assessment, they have determined that they start having some uh, reduced, uh, start having some risk factors that are showing up. Maybe they're overweight, maybe they're uh, smokers, maybe they're uh, not exercising the way that they should be. Um, those different things, again, we need to those people before they get to that, that stage three, which is an established chronic condition. So once you have that, uh, Caution, it no longer goes from prevention, but it goes to management. And if somebody goes from stage two to stage three, um, though that's when they start showing up in the health system. That's when they start becoming costly to you as an employer. They tend to have a higher number of uh, disability claims. Their absenteeism goes up. Um, productivity goes down. They uh, typically using more and more services, and they're also um, you're getting less value out of them as a, as a worker uh, many times because they're spending work time, they're spending a lot of their energy managing these disease states. And then finally, you know, stage four is that individual that has a chronic condition, but they also have a complication. Um, not only are they managing the, their chronic condition, but they're also managing some other kind of complication. Or maybe they have multiple chronic conditions. It could be a diabetic who also has uh, high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Um, or it could be somebody who's a diabetic that was recently diagnosed with cancer. Those people uh, need, you know, the highest services. Um, they're going to be the ones that often are the easiest to identify, the ones that typically get the most services from your vendors. But what we want to do throughout this process um, and, and getting all of your vendors in a room together is identify what tools and resources do each one of your vendors have for everyone um, within this and how can you get the support from your vendors to help stop the progression of your individuals and your plan members uh, along this path? Because the fewer people you have, have in buckets three and four, the less costly your benefits are going to be. And by giving tools and resources to those that are in buckets one and two, um, that's only going to help prevent the number of people that you have with those chronic conditions and those um, advanced uh, diseases and, and complications. Go through one example here, and this is something again. So, as you go through the vendor summit, if, if diabetes is a is conditions that you've selected, what you do is through this um, again this wellness to disease continuum. You want to talk about you know so what wellness services do you have for diabetes? Which have services to support, again, this people that fall into bucket number one, if I go back to the last slide. We're talking about the individuals that are well. They don't have health claims. They don't have disability claims. They're not using the EAP program. They probably have, uh, you know, green scores as it relates to their health risk assessment. But we don't want that to be the end game there for them. There has to be some resources that you might give them, again, specific to these conditions that you're looking at. Um, so it can easily be education. It can be um, information on how uh, lifestyle behaviors can affect um, the likelihood of them getting to disease states. It can talk to them about educating them on just, again, the lifestyle choices they make and, and in the long term what that may lead to. And this isn't for you to determine as the employer. This is a way for you to challenge your vendors as to asking them what services they have, um, who do they go to? How are they going to engage plan members? How often are they going to do so? Um, 
what information could uh, the vendors need to make them more successful in doing so? This will be more prevalent as you get a little bit farther down the the, the different stages. Um, then again, how does the vendor determine and measure and communicate success? So one of the things you want to do here, because as you go on, you'll see the next step is that likelihood of disease or pre-diabetic. So that would be those individuals in stage two. Again, you'll go through the same exercise asking about which vendors have services to support these, those individuals. What are they? Um, how are engaging plan members? How often are they doing so? Um, what information could be shared amongst the vendors to make them more successful at targeting these individuals? And then how are we going to determine and measure and communicate success? Um, what we want to start doing is start laying out that roadmap so that if we determine that three different vendors have services for individuals that are pre-diabetic, how are we coordinating that, that, um, those efforts so that the individual is not, one, getting bombarded with information from three different sources, and two, that the messages are mixed messages across the different vendorships. So putting all that out on the table and understanding what resources are available, and then determining who has the best resources and maybe who should take the lead for different um, Levels of disease state is key here within the planning process. And of course, the established disease or chronic condition of diabetes. So this again, um, stage three, when somebody has full-on diabetes, uh, you're looking at identifying um, what services are available and how often they're, they're engaging the plan members and, and, and what is needed. So when we get into stage three and stage four, that's really when your disease management case managers are going to get involved. Potentially, your employee assistant program could have some resources there. You're also going to see a little bit more as it relates to um, disability and workers' comp. You're going to see these people will show up in those quite frequently. Um, it, it's interesting when you start looking at the data and you start looking at disability claims and workers' comp claims, how people tend to coordinate back to um, little higher utilizers on the medical side, and it's a lot of times has to do with the fact that they're managing chronic conditions. So again, you want to make sure that um, getting all of all of the, the information out on the table so that you can figure out what are the best services to um, support these individuals. And then you have that disease state with complications. So again, that could be somebody with diabetes and heart disease. And you want to make sure that they have, again, a specific set of services available to them um, from each one of the vendors or determine who the best vendor is to help out with that. We talked a little bit about this. We go through this process of the data integration opportunities and really mapping out um, where everyone falls on the disease spectrum. Um, you're going to determine how each vendor is receiving information and how it's being utilized to target members in each one of the four categories. What you'll find is that some vendors are not able to identify these members based on their limited data. So, for example, you might have an a, a excellent employee assistance program, but they're relying on individuals to call them in order to engage services. There may be opportunities there by sharing information um, from other vendors that will allow the, your employee assistance program do targeted mailings or do reach out to specific set of your individuals based on the information that they can get maybe from the health risk assessment vendor or from the, the medical vendor in order to help them enhance the, the experience that they're giving to your employees and their dependents and also uh, maximize the, the value of the, the dollar that you're spending on that program. You're going to, again, understand what is the information that the vendors need to determine conditions what information our other vendors have that could be shared, as I just kind of talked about, and then how can we integrate the data to maximize the vendor services and provide, them, provide value to the plan members? And then finally understanding how will these services be coordinated among the vendors. Another example of this, when you start thinking about a disease management program, oftentimes disease management programs wait for the medical claims data to determine who should be contacted. Um, doing so, a lot of times they miss the opportunity to get someone who's in stage two, again, that pre-diabetic, get them involved, and they wait until someone has uh, full-on diabetes before they've 
bring back. And then oftentimes with the lags that you have with medical claims data, that person may be, have managed their uh, diabetes independently for the first three to six months um, without any support from the disease management company because that's how long it took for the disease management company to get the claims data feed from the health care in order to uh, identify this individual and then finally get a hold of them through some kind of an outreach program. Um, many of you know that, you know, when someone gets newly diagnosed with diabetes, the, the this time is that first three to six months, um, oftentimes it can lead to some larger claims. It can lead to them ending up in the emergency room or other conditions because they uh, don't have a complete understanding of how to manage um, the diabetes, their medications, their testings, and those types of things. So, you know, one of the questions that could be asked if we're going through and we've identified diabetes as a, a targeted condition is, you know, can we use the health risk assessment data? get um, the disease management carrier more involved with more individuals. So can the, the health risk assessment data be shared with the disease management vendors to, them to, to show, um, identify these patients sooner? So again, we're looking at how can we help the vendors or how can the other vendors in the room help everyone else be more proactive versus reactive? So scenario planning, um, this, when you look at the agenda, it's not on the agenda that, I, that uh, we shared. Oftentimes this can be a good exercise for year two and beyond, but really it does is it challenges the vendors to think about um, your group and your benefits as a whole, and it uh, gets them to think about more than just their services, but again, your total benefits package. In this example, again, you talk about a, a a vet may receive a call from a member who's having trouble with their vision. They identify that they're actively involved in the management program for diabetes, but then she also states that she's having trouble paying bills due to a sick dependent. Um, you know, the question you can go through is, is this a vision-only question? Um, is there integration opportunities with other services? If you're the vision carrier or if you're the medical carrier, are you going to transfer this person to the disease management vendor? Um, ask one of the vendors how would they handle this call? Is the plamber getting a consistent message from each um, one of the vendors? Is there one vet that these calls should be triaged to? And also asking the question about, you know, what about that sick dependent? Um, who's able to assist in, in helping this individual manage those costs or talk about those costs? And, and again, getting them to think about what are the benefits that you have and making sure that their databases um, and their call centers have that information so that they have the necessary resources to maximize um, that experience with your individual uh, plan member. Guarantees and vendor accountability. So as we've gone through the process, um, one of the things is, is once we've set the key initiatives and goals, we make sure that, that we have a detailed plan laid out to prioritize what the initiatives are, um, identifying what the vendor and the employer responsibilities are, who the audience is for each one of these initiatives, identifying what the cost is of these initiatives. So some vendors may be willing to do some of these services for free. It might be part of their, their package and we just need to discover what, what things are available. Although there may be a cost involved. And, you know, and understanding what that cost is will help you determine the, how uh, you want to prioritize that initiative. And then um, also understanding when that initiative is going to occur. Is it going to be a year-long program? Is it going to be a month or a two-month campaign, something you're going to do over the summer, something you're going to do during open enrollment, um, laying all those things out. And then also the communication plan. Who's leading that communication plan? Uh, where is the communication coming from? Is it coming from the employer? Is it coming from the individual vendors? What's the follow-up plan? So how are we going to, throughout the year, if this is a long initiative, how are we going to uh, stay in contact and stay uh, abreast of how these programs are, are performing? And then finally, how are we going to measure, me measure these initiatives? So when are we going to measure? What's going to be measured? How is ROI going to be evaluated? Do you from what's going to be considered a success? And then also determining what adjustments need to be made based on that measurement. 
know the different things that you can put in place, and that's how we hold uh, the bureau accountable throughout this process. So back to um, our agenda and our case study again. Once we've gone through and kind of done um, identifying the the conditions, talking about what services are available for those targeted conditions, and determining what services each one of the vendors are going to offer and prioritizing the initiatives, then we need to create a list of uh, goals for one of those conditions. And those goals need to have action items. So um, this is one example. Uh, this time now we're talking about uh, tobacco use. but. So the goal is to reduce the health cost by reducing unhealthy lifestyle choices. So one to do that is, uh, or one objective from that is reduce tobacco use by 10% over the next year. So that objective, um, how are we going to measure, me measure this information? I'm going to look at the aggregate report provided by the HRA vendor, um, and because the HRA vendor and on an annual basis, we'll be able to measure this again next year and determine what our two usage is at that time. So and the, kind of the why of the rationale behind this is that reducing tobacco will improve the overall health risk levels of the plant member population. So lay out for each one of our goals, usually two to three objectives on how we're going to meet that goal for the upcoming year. And this is just one example of doing so. you talk through this, you know, you create the detailed action plan for each one of these goals. And, and each one has to um, identify what the measurement is, what the time frame is, what the vendor and the employer responsibility is, and then what the communication strategy is going to be for that um, particular action item. So to go through the example that we just talked about uh, is the reduction in um, tobacco use. The action item might be um, in order for us to get to that reduction of 10%, this is a pretty vanilla or generic one, but it could be as simple as providing educational resources to assist plan members in quitting smoking. Um, that's your action item. So then how are we going to measure it? Again, we're going to look at the aggregate HRA report, the historical trend of tobacco use over time. What the costs involved in this, and this is always key to identify what are the costs of these different action items. For example, it's included as part of the health risk assessment resources. So the health risk assessment that discovery process has identified that they have these resources available to you um, and you need to just say let them know when and, and how we want to get those into the hands of those that are testing positive for nicotine through the health risk assessment. Again, identify who's responsible for doing this. So. In this case, the HRA vendor will provide the, the materials to the employer. The employer then is going to, as you can see in the marketing communication strategy, they're going to post session in break rooms. Um, and they've also determined that the HRA vendor can do targeted mailings to the employees who tested positive for tobacco. So those would be the two strategies that would would that uh, the educational resources. And then as far as the time frame goes, this is probably going to be a year-long campaign as a result of posting information and things like that. The targeting mailings um, time frame there, we would like to have more than likely something done in 90 days of them getting their results um, as it relates to the health risk assessments. So it's just going to be one action item for that one specific goal that you have. An action item could be Adding a penalty uh, for employee contributions for the next calendar year for those that test positive for tobacco. Another could be waiving copays or deductibles as it relates to uh, participating in any kind of uh, uh, so, uh, prescriptions for helping them quit, uh, nicotine patches, those types of things. So. This is where you do the brainstorming. This is where you want to talk about what are the resources available. And really, at the end of the day, what this is going to do is it's going to provide you with the roadmap of activities, goals, and end items for the upcoming plan year that are outcomes-based and measurable. And this can be an excellent tool then for you to share with your, the leadership of your organization to help them get buy-in for these different programs and help them see the value of what you're doing um, as an individual 
HR staff as well as the value that you're providing to the employee population as a whole. To wrap it up here, um, through Vendor Summit's help, uh, you as well as your vendors understand the core competencies of your vendor partners. That's really one of the first goals that you want to get out of your Vendor Summit is understanding what are tools and resources available from your current vendors. That helps you share your strategic goals and visions with your vendors, which change their, makes the your, your organization the full point and puts you in a position of power. Um, it also helps you determine the top conditions and identifies the resources available to help you manage them. And develop uh, an integrated health management strategy, only turning your vendors into strategic partners. And it you hold your vendors accountable to you as their client. So, like, whether a small employer or a large employer, getting all of your vendors together in a room together, getting to understand what is important to you as an organization and what is important to you uh, and your employees will help them be a partner and change uh, the relationship from vendor to strategic partner. And uh, you hold them accountable, and at the end of the day, make your benefits, uh, may you offer your employees more visible and uh, better appreciated by all. Thank you. So we can open it up to any questions that you might have um, or any comments. You type them into the Q&A section, the chat section, or you can just shut them out. Questions? If you question now, but as time goes on and you go back through this webinar, um, which I will be sending to everybody, a, a recording of it, and back through and you think over things, um, you can see that Jesse has provided his contact information. You can always email him or call him with a question as well. Everyone for uh, participating today and uh, as Susan said, feel free to reach out to uh, me usually if you have any questions and I thank you for your time and um go ahead and pull up the um the survey that I spoke about earlier. To please answer these questions and then when you're done I will go ahead and pull up the um certification screen.
uh, certification slide up for a little bit while longer, and um, we just want to thank everybody for taking time out of their day to attend this webinar with us. Have a great rest of your day.